Hey there and a huge welcome to Get Indie Gaming. Up today I have my top 5 indie games of February currently looking for funding via the Kickstarter platform. Before we take a closer look, let's set aside a few moments though to see how the games I featured in my last review, all the way back in December, did against their aims. Well, in something of a rarity for this series, all five games from the last episode were successfully backed. Where the Bees Make Honey brought in just over $6,300 versus a target of five grand. With this looking all set to launch within a couple of months, backers and players can look forward to seeing how this turns out relatively soon. No Time to Relax almost didn't make it and scraped over the line with 830 bucks over its target of 8,000 US dollars. Huge congratulations to the team who worked up until the wire to secure the money to drive this project forwards. Monster Sanctuary was another cracker of a campaign, bringing in 100,000 euros versus its target of 20k. Stretch goals met included the addition of way more monsters, a port onto the Switch, speedrun modes and an online PvP game player mode. The campaign for Hazelnut Bastille was a huge success, with it getting funded to the tune of nearly $177,000 versus its original target of only 65 grand. Stretch goals met included a port onto the Switch, additional localizations, and new in-game modes. And lastly, Omno are number one from the last time we did this series. Well, that brought in nearly a hundred thousand euros versus its thirty-two thousand target. This also means it hit stretch goals to include launches on the PlayStation Four, the Switch, photo modes, different endings, enhanced lore, and even more in-game modes. Will my selections for this month prove to be as successful? Let's waste no more time and jump straight into things. We begin with Lunark, which is looking for the equivalent of 53,000 US dollars. I'm actually rather smitten by this one with its 2D cinematic platforming vibes, with its clear influences from the likes of the 80s and 90s by way of Flashback and the Prince of Persia. While making a play for those of us with a fondness for the nostalgic side of things, the developers go at length within their pitch to explain the game will ship with modern responsive controls, while having an intuitive and generous progression system. With a street date for launch of around April 2020, and with two weeks or so to go as this video airs, Lunark is currently sitting on around the 50% funded benchmark. Rewards for backers include your name in the credits, being within the game as an NPC, as well as the more usual and expected copies of the game, soundtrack downloads, and other goodies. While this essentially all comes from a single developer, their work includes contributions to Flinthook, Shovel Knight Showdown, and Adventure Time. Having recently played Flashback once again on the Switch, I'd be more than happy to settle down to this one to see how it compares with and builds upon the classics of this particular genre. At number 4, Chained Echoes is wanting to raise 60,000 euros, so that's in the region of 69,000 US dollars, given today's exchange rate. With 26 or so days to go before the campaign ends on March 7th, so far the team have reached around a third of their target. Chained Echoes took hold of my attention first and foremost for what it looks like, being seemingly a good old fashioned 16-bit era SNES RPG. As usual for these offerings, it's set within a fantasy story-driven world that in keeping with the previous entry promises good old-fashioned sounds and visuals with the modern take on the gameplay. Exploration and discovery are said to be front and central while featuring a turn-based battle system with no random encounters. The addition of the ability to own and update your own airships is a fine touch, as is the supposed implementation of what the developers are calling a proper back end to the RPG. 5 euros gets you a credit in the game, 17 euros a digital copy, and 25 sees you having access to a pre-launch beta. Other rewards include a limited edition art book, the ability to design a boss, monster NPC, and a few other things to boot. With a launch expected on PC and the possibility of a port onto consoles, Chained Echoes is roughly expected out towards the end of 2021.
At number three, and having already reached their target of 35,000 US dollars with just under a week to go, Tunche is a beautiful looking hand drawn 2D beat em up that's said to contain a number of RPG elements, including crafting and a day night cycle where monsters become tougher after dark. There's also permadeath, so when you die, you forgo the upgrades you've collected along the way and head back to the first level. With a Q4 launch date scheduled for the PC, PlayStation 4, Switch and Xbox, I must honestly say, like the other games already covered in this countdown, I'm very much drawn to this because of how it looks in terms of the overall art direction, but also in how the combat appears to play out, and having played the demo which you can pick up from the Steam page today, it's a genuinely enjoyable experience and one I'm so far happy to recommend to others. Backer rewards include all the usual things, although the addition of a physical copy is a nice little touch that usually helps bring out the collectors. Well, this all does look rather swell, and while I haven't mentioned it already, the ability to play with three other mates at the same time is on paper another fine little bonus to the gameplay. In the runner-up slot for February, Summer in Mara expects to ship late this year via the PC, PlayStation 4 and the Nintendo Switch. Set within the tropical ocean, this one is a single-player game about farming and crafting, all within an easy RPG system that offers exploration elements. While you're tasked with looking after your own island, You'll also be able to take your character out into the ocean to search for other islands where you'll meet with other people and find resources to trade. With all the characters in the game having their own backstory and heritage, such discovery becomes a driving force to keep exploring to see what and who you can find out in the ocean. With more than 25 days to go as this video comes out, the campaign ends on March 8th and is already fully funded. I'm very much liking how Mara looks with the character and ship animations, together with the overall playfulness of what I've seen in the farming and crafting elements. There's certainly elements here from the Wind Waker and of course other well-known farming sims, and yet the focus with it coming from a hand-drawn type of perspective helps point this one into something that feels familiar, albeit with a slight twist. Given the team behind this one have heritage by the way of the super wonderful Dayland, I have every faith in this one being as fun to play as their previous offering, and I'll eagerly await to see where this campaign ends towards the front end of next month. At this month's number one, Born Punk has already smashed through its funding aims of what seems a reasonably modest give or take 10,000 US dollars. With a playable demo offering a fair slice of what we can all expect, this one launches on PCs and consoles and mobile devices in early 2020. Heavy with cyberpunk stylings, Born Punk tapped me on the shoulder and metaphorically said hello, far louder than any other game featured on Kickstarter for some time. Again, as perhaps my gaming heritage bubbles to the surface, this point-and-click adventure heavy with 80s and 90s notes and references and a promised gameplay of logical puzzles used to advance the story via dialogue, together with branching storylines where every action has a consequence, is something I can really get excited over. Let's add on top of that a cast full of voice actors, together with stretch goals including to add more to the length of the game, offering additional player characters and in-game radio stations with a whole load of new localizations, and adding additional voice actors so it's not just vocalized in English. So yes, on paper born punk looks and sounds like something I should rather enjoy. If you're interested and don't fancy downloading the demo, there's some decent gameplay footage doing the round, so I'll be sure to leave a link for you down in the video description. Born Punk campaign ends March 7th, and given the time left and the media traction this one's already afforded, I'll wager Born Punk's final take-home figure could be in the early six figures. And with that, many thanks for watching. As usual, I'll recap how these games fared and where they ended their campaigns in next month's Kickstarter video. Still to come in February, we have the continuation of our series looking into some of the indie game hidden gems you might have missed. 
Plus, I'm also hoping to get a review copy of the new Toe Jam and Earl game, which is due to land early March. Patrons, of course, have access to this content early, and while you're here, please click the like button, and if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to the channel? Thanks once again, and I look forward to welcoming you back here soon for more indie game videos.